Let's get into the first part today where we're going to be looking at the Dynasties of India expansion. Okay, first of all, the Bengalis. Let's get into the stuff I actually care about. So the bonuses are unit, elephant units receive 25% less bonus damage and are more resistant, are resistant to conversion. And I honestly, I don't like this bonus. I feel like elephants, when they're massed already, they're such a hard unit to counter because they're super pop efficient. I feel like you should be making them uh, relatively easy to counter, to be 100% honest. Whereas the villagers next stage thing, I actually don't mind. I think it could be overtuned potentially. It might be a one villager bonus rather than two villager bonus. But a lot of other civs do have similarly strong uh, economies. Uh, ships regenerate 15 HP per minute. That's kind of cool to me. I, there isn't that many decent water sips, so I think that's fine. Uh, unique units for the Ratha, the Bengali Unique Chariot. I love the sound of this. I have to admit, I fucking love the sound of this. You've got a, a unique chariot that can switch between melee and range attacks. I wonder if you actually have to specifically tell the, the chariot what units they like, want to do here. Like, if it's like a you click like Q or something, it switches from range to melee mode. I do have to wonder what the move speed on this thing is though, because there's a good chance that if it's too fast, it's going to be impossible to actually deal with. I'm um, an elephant anti-building cavalry unit. So basically, it's like a war elephant from what I'm seeing here, but low damage outputs. Almost like a ram, I think. Unique text, pikes, rathas, and elephant units attack 25th faster. I don't think that's anything too worrying. Villagers take 10% less population space. That's interesting. I think with their team bonus as well, it might be slightly too strong. I think in 1v1s though, the villagers taking 10% less population space might actually need to be checked depending on what their texts are. Let's say they lack the last art, uh, wood upgrade, for example. It's not as worrying. Oh boy, I don't know how to make this look good in the overlay. Um, I think some of it might be cut off, but I'll do my burst. So they don't... I was wondering if the, these cis wouldn't get cavalry archers as a result of getting elephant archers, and it seems to be the case. The Bengalis do not get elephant archers. Uh, they do not get knights or camels. They only get elephants and light cavalry, which is an interesting thing there. And the armored elephant can be trained from the siege workshop? What? Okay, I'm not sure about that one. Lacking Hussar, so they're not going to be a particularly good cavalry to be on the elephants. They have almost full blacksmith though, minus the final armor. So yeah, the armored elephant is literally going to be a ram, which I think is hilarious. It depends. We'll have to see if it means that it can be converted from a range because if it can be converted from range similar to ballista elephant that's gonna be shit that is gonna be so so shit um for the unit apparently there's also even elite elephant archer here as well this, they're basically i wonder if they're gonna have the exact same stats as the current elephant archer if they've toned it down uh and their docks obviously amazing you'd expect it to be amazing with the with the, them specifically being geared towards water maps with that regen so i think that not being able to be converted to range it should be okay we'll see how much better than a ram it is in castle age i'm kind of getting the vibe it might be similar to a capped ram in castle age the ratha looks amazing i don't know how it's gonna play out in terms of its actual execution similar to the Cousselier, i don't like how they executed it but i think that it's a very interesting concept and the ecotexts uh, honestly, I was sort of expecting them to miss Two Man Saw and maybe a couple of these other late game eco techs because they have the 10% uh, eco uh, reduction on all of their units. Uh, what is it called? The Mahayana uh, unique tech. So I have to wonder how expensive this is going to be. I don't think you're able to mouse over to see any expenses here, but I think it will be a decently expensive upgrade. So next we have the Dravidians. And we're not going to go through that. We're just going to go straight to the bonuses. 200 women advancing to the next age. I think this is a brilliant bonus. I think that the Ethiopians are already pretty balanced with their plus 100 food, 100 gold. I think 200 wood may be a little bit excessive. We'll have to see. Uh, 
Maybe it'll be toned down to 150, depending on how it ends up playing out. Fisherman and fishing ships carry extra resources. That's a pretty cool bonus. I like it. Barrack technology is costing minus 50%. That's pretty cool, honestly. Similar to the uh, Burgundian bonuses on their stable technologies. And skirmishes and elephant archers attacking faster. I also quite like this. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of skirmishes that don't really... Like, skirmishes don't really get many up, um, additional bonuses outside of the mesosives. I kind of like that. Uh, Yurumi Swordsman Dravidian unique infantry unit which can charge its attack. I wonder if it's going to be similar to the Cousillier, where it's an automatic charge, or if it's going to be like a manual charging uh, sort of mechanic. That's what I think could be very interesting. 200 extra wood means you don't need nearly as many early London projects. I think that the builds for this sieve will be most likely like six on wood going through the feudal. And additional ones on gold if you're going for archers, additional on uh, additional on food, like for example making early farms, dark age farms, if going for scouts. Uh, and then we have the armored elephant, so it looks like the armored elephant is just going to be like the generic ram replacement for all these things, and I, I think that's cool. We'll have to see how strong this armored elephant actually is, but I'm keen for that, honestly. And now we have another unique warship, and it's basically the Chu Canoe of the Sea, and I love that. Like, I think that we've needed the Chu Canoe of the Sea. I guess the longboat is slow. Wait, how is this going to be different to longboats? Hmm. Based on the wording of this, I'll have to see what it's like if it's like a... It just feels like it'd be like a, a literally a longboat, right? Uh, then we have the unique text medical cause elephant units regenerate 20 HP per minute. Look, I'm a little bit skeptical on a lot of these elephant texts. Like, for me, elephants are already such a pop efficient unit that do we really need to be making them any stronger? We have to see what the the tech tree is, but that does make me a little bit nervous. And wood steel infantry and cavalry attacks ignoring armor. If we're including that with the elephant units for generating 20 HP per mo minute, that could be a potential issue. So they get almost full archery range minus cavalry archers, elephant archers of course replacing the cavalry archers, no Parthian though. Barracks, almost full upgrades, stable, no elite battle elephant, that's at least something. I think if you were to give them elite battle elephant with the 20 HP uh, bonus, that would be pretty horrific, and especially with the armor production no bloodlines as well they do miss out on plate blooding as well so they're not don't have great uh stable but they do at least have elements which i think is are these elephants best they, they're slightly better quality than malay elephants but they also cost full amounts so they're it's a pretty shit stable to be honest go down a little bit further actually full dock so they're gonna go ham with this and this is a uh, Imperial Age ship, so I think it might be like a late game, uh, I think it'll be like a late game version of a longboat almost. University, nothing too massive is missing other than Siege Engineers, they're not gonna have the world's best siege for the looks of things, uh, no Bombard Cannon either, they do get SO though. And see, this is sort of what I was expecting to see with the last Civ's uh, ecotech tree. Missing a few of these late game ecotechs with the 10% bonus. So I'm a little bit surprised to see that this was the one that has few of them, or more of them missing. Next we have the Gujaras. Uh, we won't go through the introduction here. So the two forage bushes, I think that's a pretty cool bonus. Forage bushes aren't exactly the most efficient uh, source of food anyway in the beginning, so having the additional safety without giving them anything too strong alongside it, I think it's pretty cool. Getting garrison mills of livestock to produce food, so we might see some really different builds with them to avoid taking as many of that livestock as possible. It always seems as if they're sort of implementing some AoE3 mechanics here though, which some people might like, some people may not be as big of a fan of. Mounting units deal plus 50% bonus damage. It's very, very specifically saying bonus damage here. So it will be your camels doing bonus damage. It'll be... Is there any other units that do bonus damage here? If uh, ca cavalry archers, if they have um, 
Parthian tactics would do bonus damage. I think it's pretty cool. I have to see how much bonus damage it is to see if it's balanced. There aren't that many mounted units that do bonus damage. Can garrison docks with fishing ships? So all of these sieves so far are very focused on also having decent water bonuses, which I'm excited for. I think that water bonuses are super underrated. And now we have the Chakram Thrower, a Gujarat unique infantry unit with a ranged melee attack. That to me is pretty cool. I like the sound of this. It seems like a throwing axeman almost in terms of its execution. I know the Chakram Throwers in AoE 3 do splash damage. This doesn't seem like it does splash damage here from the wording of it, but it could potentially be. A Shreve... I can't say that, but it's a, it's a unique light cavalry unit which can dodge projectiles. Which is strongman versus archers and weak versus pikemen and camel riders. This to me looks like a... They must be lacking skirmishes or skirmisher upgrades for this to be... Uh, balanced out essentially. Uh, camel scout, Gudra unique scout unit, strongman versus cavalry, weak versus pikemen, monks and archers of course. Uh, I wonder how strong versus cavalry though. Like, if it's strong versus, like, knights and stuff, that's a problem. If it's strong versus, like, other cavalry, I think that's cool. Armored Elephant, of course, we've already talked about that. Military units cost minus 25% food. Kind of depends on how much food we're talking about. But that will impact the elephants, and elephants are usually super expensive on food. So this could be pretty strong. And also, also depends on how much the Chakram Throwers cost on food, etc, etc. And Frontier Guards, Camel Riders, and Elephant Archers have bonus 4 melee armor. Why? <laughs> elephant Archers are, are, and are already hard enough to kill? Camel Riders getting bonus melee armor could be okay, but Elephant Archers don't need any more reasons to be difficult to kill. Camel and Elephant units created faster as well, so this is almost like... Uh, you'll see, like, you can have, like, four Indian subcontinent civs here and having all of them producing faster for these new units. Let's have a look at the archery range and everything for the Gujaras. Looks like they get a relatively good archery range. Uh, no final armor, no Parthian tactics, but thumb ring and bracer. I really don't know how to feel about the Elephant Archers being almost fully upgraded with all that extra armor. At least they do miss Parthian, so it's not as bad as it could be. Uh, <laughs> Gujarats don't have uh, even Pikemen though, so they don't have a good counter to Cavalry beyond the Camel Scouts. Which actually... Wait, so this is... Do they automatically upgrade into Camel Riders? That's an interesting mechanic. They actually don't get Battle Elephant either, which I think is good considering the fact that they have that plus four bonus melee armor. I think Battle Elephants with that would just be completely insane. And they obviously have that Shakurima Rider. I'm sorry, I really can't say that. <laughs> uh, but they don't even get Blast Fighters either, so their melee cavalry is a little bit lacking in the damage output side of things. They thought it replaced scouts, so they actually have access the access to scouts as well as camel scouts. I believe this will be due to the fact that the camel scout will not be good against monks. But I'm I do have to wonder if the camel scout instantly evolves into camel riders, because then you suddenly have a super hard counter to every cavalry opening just by going for camel scouts. It will also depend on how much the camel scout costs, if it's a lot of gold as well as food. Uh, but I am very, very interested to see how this works. Did they have at least been consulting pros? I hope so. Uh, obviously lacking the Sea Dram upgrade as well, similar to all these other Indian civs. Uh, Doc techs compared to the other ones so far are a little bit lacking, but still relatively decent. Considering they still get Bracer and Galleon, they get Cannon Galleon, Heavy Demo Ship. Uh, no Fast Fire though. Have a look at their economy... Almost full upgrades. Uh, I still feel like Two Man Saw should be missing from the Bengalis, but Gujarat's not getting it shouldn't be the end of the world. Uh, so I am excited for the new ca campaigns. I always love meet some new campaigns. You guys can read that in that in your own time. 
and new achievements of course, but I'm currently more interested to see the balance changes to the Hindu Sarnis. The Hindu Sarnis obviously were the Indians before, and uh, I'm intrigued to see what they've done to change it. So the villagers cost uh, is still part of their bonuses. Camel riders attacking faster is instead of their uh, bonus armor on the camel riders before. Gunpowder units now have additional armor, which I think is a cool little change uh, to see how strong their gunpowder units will realistically be. They can build caravansary, sorry again for the butchering that in the Imperial Age. Now from my understanding of the caravansary, it is a, a building that increases the trade cart movement around it. So like within like a 10 tile radius. And all the trade carts in that 10 tile radius move slightly faster. I think it's pretty cool. They have a new unique unit, obviously Elephant Archer being made a generic unit between these four sips. It is the Gulam, a Hindustani unique infantry unit which thrusts its spear through multiple targets. Almost like a melee scorpion. Right? I kind of like that. And they get the Imperial Camel Rider they used to get before. Uh, it looks like they don't get the Armored Elephant though, surprisingly. They might not even get Elephant uh, by the looks of things, potentially. They also heals the trade cards, which I think is pretty cool uh, for when you're getting raided. A unique text, Grand Trunk Raiders instead of Sultans. I don't know about the renaming, but sure. <laughs> and they get Shatagni with the hand cannons. It actually used to be only plus one range from memory. Now they get plus two range, which is pretty cool. Uh, team bonus, camel and light cavalry unit. And light cavalry unit get plus two attack versus building. So the camels no longer get plus four uh, against buildings, but their light cav and camel get plus two against buildings. So they'll be pretty strong against buildings. Uh, I think it's an interesting change. I have to see how strong it really ends up being though. Archery range, so they actually don't get the elephant archer. Wait. The Sib that literally had elephant archer as a unique unit doesn't get them anymore? Like, I feel like this is the one Sib that you could give both of them to. Like, even if you give them generic elephant archers. The Sib that literally had them! I don't know how I feel about that. That's that's a mind fuck. <laughs> um, beyond that, no Parthian tactics anymore, so they're not gonna be the best CA Civ. Still decent though with Bracer and plus more defense. Um, they do get the armored elephant, so they didn't actually have that on their unique unit list just then. But I don't know why I, I understand them not having battle elephant. That to me makes sense. But if the Civ that literally had Elephant Archer as a unique unit doesn't get Elephant Archer. It just feels so weird, right? Anyway, we're going to go beyond that. Of course, having the Imperial Camel there. Actually, now getting plus four defense again. So they lost it before with some bounce changes quite a long time ago. But now they have a generic full upgraded uh, Heavy Camel. Better than upgraded Imperial Camel with the faster attack as well. And the Hussar... Uh, being fully upgraded here as well, with a bit of bonus against buildings. It feels like the Hindu Stardis are sort of redesigned as a bit of an infantry civ almost, uh, with their uh, unique unit and also decent uh, infantry, camels, and gunpowder. <laughs> so the leak was pretty accurate with a lot of the information. You missed out on Dravidians being the. Inf oh, yeah, of course, they were the infantry civ here, Botkin. But the thing is that with a unique unit like this, to me, this is quite an emphasis on their unique infantry. If they're strong versus archers on a infantry unit, it's a little bit of like having a Huskarl bonus. And then you can do like a Huskarl, sorry, a Ghulam and Halberdier sort of composition. 